Now let's look at the layout and design of a resume from a hiring manager's perspective. Here is the hiring manager's job description. As you can see, this employer has requested specific skills and credentials. Pause this video and review the description. We'll now look at a resume that is being presented for this position. Susie did not want to miss the cutoff deadline, and so she very quickly sent in her resume for this position. Now I want you to think about this from the perspective of a hiring manager and decide if you would bring Susie in for an interview. So the first question is, does this resume pass the first impression test of professionalism, attention to detail, and emphasis on relevant skills? As a hiring manager, I am immediately struck with the lack of visual appeal. It's important to note that even if you have some of the experience that the hiring manager is looking for, if they have to wade through obstacles to see that experience, your resume will likely end up in the reject pile. So let's touch on a few of the obstacles in Susie's resume. So from a professionalism standpoint, again, this resume is just not very visually appealing. I noticed that she uses what I would consider an unprofessional email address. There are inconsistent fonts used in this resume. For instance, I see a nine point font here and a 10 point font down in the body of the resume. Within the experience, I noticed that she's using personal pronouns instead of action verbs. Overall, from a professionalism standpoint, there's just not much information here. This resume is very bare and does not convey a skilled professional. From the standpoint of attention to detail, I also see inconsistent formatting. Some dates are to the left of the content, some dates are to the right of the content. There's also inconsistent spacing. I see a typo down here in the experience section next to director of marketing. There are missing employment locations. She says she was the director of marketing and a marketing coordinator, but she doesn't tell us who she worked for. Incorrect verb tense is being used. For instance, for these older experience, it looks like she's using present tense as opposed to past tense. And again, there appears to be an employment gap. Up here in her first experience, she says that she is currently, she has 2017 listed as her date, but there's no range. So I have no idea if there's a gap there, if she's still presently working there. I just don't know what's going on with this particular experience. In the area of emphasis on relevant skills, I noticed that there is no professional profile being included in this resume to highlight those most relevant skills. I do notice also that there's a lot of irrelevant information added. For example, this Bachelor's of Science in Interdisciplinary Studies is an incomplete degree, but it's on her resume. I also noticed that there are two cert certificates on here that are unrelated to the position. The summary of skills appears to be really general. Again, even if she has these particular skills, you want to keep the focus on the skills that the employer has asked for. And again, these types of soft skills are hard to verify, so it's best to use hard skills in the summary of skills section. And again, finally, within the experience section, I really don't see any results or how she's added value to this, to this position. So the question that you have to ask yourself is, if you were the hiring manager, even if Susie met some of these requirements, would you be interested in calling her in for an interview? So now let's take a look at Susie's resume after completing this resume course and having her resume reviewed. So the first thing that Susie does is she does a matching skills table. Basically takes the job description, breaks it into a table so that she can clearly see what the employer is asking for, and then creates another column to list out her matching skills. This will help her to really put the focus on what's relevant and most important to that employer. After completing the matching skills table, she completes her updates to her new resume. So let's go ahead and do the first impression test on Susie after all of her updates. So the first thing that I notice again is this resume is very visually appealing. There's a great use of white space and there's consistent fonts being used all throughout this resume. I notice that she now has a very professional looking email address. This resume is really easy to read with bullets and also the sections are well laid out. And also I notice within the experience section that she doesn't use any personal pronoun. Each statement starts with an action verb. In the area of attention to detail, I notice that she's using consistent formats, meaning all of the dates are now aligned to the right. And there's a consistent bolding of important information such as her position title. There are no typos and errors that I can see within this document. The correct verb tense is being used, current, 
current and present tense jobs are being done in the present tense and past jobs are being done in the past tense. And then there's consistent dates, meaning all dates included have the full range. So there doesn't appear to be any gaps in this particular resume. And finally, in the area of emphasis on relevant skills, I noticed that she has included a professional profile that again, focuses immediately on the things that were most important to the employer. I can see three years of experience. I can see that she managed a team. I can see that she, have no, she has knowledge of social media platforms, et cetera. So again, a strong profile is being used. The most relevant information is being used. The skills section clearly talks about skills that are very, very important to the employer. And I don't see those certificates um, listed here, which is information that is unrelated to the position, as well as that, that degree that was unrelated has also been removed. The other thing is that Susie laid out her resume. So that again, the first and most relevant information is apparent. So her skills, her relevant experience, she broke out um, experience that was unrelated to the unrelated to the position in a, in a section called additional experience again so that the focus is placed directly on her marketing experience and then she also moved her education down to the bottom of the resume because she has extensive experience in this particular role so if you were the hiring manager for this position would you now invite Susie in for an interview by following these basic guidelines, you are setting yourself up to create a resume that will stand out and get noticed.